Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video I'm going to teach you how to play Flamecraft. This is a brand new one from Lucky Duck Games. It is a 1-5 to five player game that takes roughly 1-2 to two hours to play, and is a competitive game where players are going to be competing with each other throughout the game to gain the most reputation points. And in the game, whoever has the most will be the winner. So in this video I'm going to teach you how to play, starting with components, setup, player turns, and end game scoring. As always, if you find my videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribing to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and build and produce this content. If you want to get notified whenever I drop new videos, such as other teaching videos, playthroughs, unboxings, Kickstarter coverage, and all kinds of other content, also give that notification bell a ring, and that'll let you know whenever I drop new videos. So let's go ahead and head to the table, and I'll teach you how to play. The first components I want to go over are the seven different tokens included in the game. The first six that I want to cover are considered goods, and these will be on a number of different things throughout the game. These are going to be the green leaf, the purple potion, the red meat, light blue diamonds, yellow bread, and the dark blue anvil. Then you're also going to have coins. These are going to be worth reputation points at the end of the game, but also during the game you can spend them to count as any one other good. Coins by themselves are not considered goods. From there, there are six different mini decks included in the game as well, and I want to take a closer look at each one of these. The first one is the Starter Dragon deck, and there'll be six cards in this deck, and these are going to be used during setup. Each of these cards on the back of the card will have the white background with the little trumpet and flag. On the front of each of these cards, you'll have the little trumpet and the flag signifying it's a starter dragon, its name, and the icon it's associated with, then the image of the dragon and its fire up ability. And each one of the different types of dragons will have a unique fire up ability, but each dragon of that type is going to have the exact same fire up ability. So all diamond dragons will have gained three different goods. Next, we have the Artisan Dragon deck, and this is exactly the same as the Starter Dragons, except for these will be used throughout the game. Each of these dragons, again, will have the icon it's associated with and its fire up ability on the bottom, which again is going to be exactly the same for each dragon of that type. The Fancy Dragon deck will provide players with additional opportunities both during the game and at the end of the game to gain additional reputation points. This deck is going to be comprised of two different types of dragons. The first are Sun Dragons, which only can be used during the game and during a player's turn. A player can reveal a Sun Dragon if they meet the requirements on its card, and then it will list the reward for completing that. Then, at the end of the game, if a player has any Moon Dragons, they can reveal them, and each Moon Dragon will provide the player with additional conditions that if they meet, they will receive reputation points for them. There's also two different decks of enchantments included, and you're only going to use one in each of your games. For players that are just starting out, it is recommended to use the purple deck. Each enchantment is going to list the name of the enchantment on the top, and the type of shop it can enchant, and then the requirements or goods you must spend to complete that enchantment, and then finally at the bottom are the rewards you receive for completing it. And there are two different types of enchantments, ones you'll spend a collection of goods to receive the reward, and other ones where you're going to be spending a set of goods. And for every set of goods you spend, you'll receive a better reward than if you spend less. For example, with this one, if I spend one set, I will complete this enchantment but won't receive any hearts or reputation points. For spending two sets, I'll receive two hearts and complete it. For three sets, I'll get four, and four sets, I'll get eight points. There are also two large decks of cards included in the game. The first is the Starter Shop deck, and this deck is only going to have six cards that will be used during setup, and each of these cards will have the white background with the little trumpet and flag. On the front of each of these cards is going to list the name of that shop, its little starter symbol, and the icon it's associated with. And for the starter shops, you'll have one for each of the six different goods. Then at the bottom of the card are going to be the different dragon slots. With the starter shops, you'll have one spot for a starter dragon, and the other two spots will list the types of dragons you can place there. So for example, with this one, I can either place the green leaf dragon or the yellow bread dragon in there. And then if I do, the reward that I receive for it. So I'll receive a coin. The other deck is the shop deck, and each one of these cards again is going to list the name of the shop at the top, its icon, and each one of these will have a shop ability that can be activated during a gather goods action. Then you're going to have the three dragon slots like before, and each one of these again is going to list the types of dragons you can place there and the rewards you receive for placing a dragon there. They also have three new icons. When you do a gather action at one of these locations, the first one will let you choose a good of your choice from any one of these six different goods. 
The next one is the Artisan Dragon, which will allow you to draw an Artisan Dragon. And the final one is the Coin. When going here, you'll get to gain a coin. From there, we're ready to move into setup. So the first thing you want to do is roll out the game mat in the middle of the table. And then from there, I do want to go through some of the features of the mat, and I'll do that as we go through setup. So the first thing I do want to point out, because your mat might be similar to mine, I don't know. But with mine, I, it is a little bit shorter than it shows in the rule book. And the reason I point that out is because in three to five player games, there's an additional slot on each one of the sides by the park that are labeled with three plus that are going to have that in the rule book shows a little square, but mine doesn't have that. And even the three plus is almost cut off on this side. So I just want to make you aware that there are spaces there for the three to five player games. If you're playing a one or two player game, then you will ignore these spaces. Next, you want to grab the starter dragons and the starter shops and place those out. And for my game, I'm going to set up for a two-player game. So I'm going to set up all my shops at the top of the board, but you can place them in any one of these shop spaces. So I'll go ahead and place all my starter shops out. And then you'll also place a starter dragon in each one of these shops, matching the same type of icon with the shop. So the bread dragon will go in the bread shop, for example. Then you want to place out all of the goods. For larger player count games, it might be good to separate each good pile into two different piles so that you have them on each end of the board. But for my game, I'm just going to keep them all together. Then you also want to place out all your coins, and those will go in the fountain. Next, we're going to create the shop deck. In order to do this, go ahead and grab the deck of cards that have the tan background, as you can see here. And with these cards, you're going to separate them into the six different resources, and then you'll have a seventh slot for all the other resources, including the multicolored spaces, the dragon heads, and the coins. Once you have those separated, then each one of these decks, you can go ahead and shuffle up and randomly choose one of the cards out of there for the six main resource decks. And then finally, with the final deck of cards, again, this deck is also going to be shuffled up, and then you're going to draw four cards out of this deck. That way, then you have a total of 10 cards. So let's take one, two, three, and four. Once you've completed that, then you'll have a deck of 10 cards, and these cards will also be shuffled up as well to create your deck of shop cards. Now, this is the recommended setup for your standard games. Once you're familiar with the game, if you want to change the amount of cards that you're pulling from here, say you want to take more from the random deck, or if you want to have more of certain types of cards in there, you can also do that. It is totally up to you as the players how you want to play your game. Once you've completed shuffling up your shops, then you can go ahead and place those off to the side. Next, grab your Artisan Dragon deck. If you're playing a two-player game, you're going to remove two cards of each of the different types of dragons. If you're playing a three-player game, remove one of each of those cards and return it to the box. And with four and five-player games, you'll shuffle up the entire deck of Artisan Dragons. And then you're going to place it in the Artisan Dragon space. And then from there, you're going to reveal the top five cards and place them in the park. Shuffle up and place out your Fancy Dragon deck. From there, then choose your enchantment deck. For my game, I'm going to use the purple deck, so the gold one can be returned to the box. With the purple deck, go ahead and shuffle it up and place it out in its spots on the enchantments, and then you're going to reveal the top five cards across the row. For player setup, each player should choose a color dragon that they like and gain that dragon's token. They'll also gain a matching player aid card that is going to have a quick reference guide on one side, and on the other side, as you can see, is a the different actions you can take during your turn. You'll also get a reputation marker of that color. Then you want to choose a starting player. So in order to do this, you can gather up all the different reputation tokens and shuffle them out and either have one player draw or drop one out, and that will be your starting player. Then you can place all of these tokens down at the starting location. Make sure that they're the side with the 50 points is on the bottom. Then deal each player a fan two fancy dragon cards. Each player is going to look at their fancy dragons secretly and choose one of them that they want to keep. Then the other one will be returned to the bottom of that deck. You're also going to deal each player three artisan dragons. Finally, in the four and five player games, the fourth and fifth player will each get to choose one of the different goods to start the game with. Flamecraft is played over an undefined number of turns. Starting with the first player and proceeding clockwise around the board, each player will get to take a turn. 
During a player's turn, that player will perform one action from a selection of actions, and then it'll pass to the next player. This is going to continue player after player, turn after turn, until one of the endgame conditions is met, which is if a player needs to draw or reveal a card from the Artisan Dragon deck or the Enchantment deck, and that deck is empty, that will trigger the end of the game. At that point, then each player, including the player that triggered, will get to take one final turn. After that, then you'll move into a special scoring step where players will get to score a couple of additional things, and then the player that has the most points on the reputation track will be the winner of the game. Moving into the game, I'm going to go ahead and start with the first player's turn. A player's turn is basically broken down into three parts. At the beginning of the player's turn, they must visit a new shop. Then they will perform their action, which they have two different options as an action. They can either gather goods or enchant a shop. And then they'll move into the end of their turn where they'll make sure that they don't have too many cards in their hands or resources. And they also refill anything that they need to on the game board. And then it'll pass to the next player to take their turn. So moving into a player's turn, I'm going to go ahead and take a closer look at each one of these steps in more detail and explain exactly how all of this works. Each player's turn is always going to start with that player moving to a new shop. At the beginning of the game, you're going to start off the board, and so the first part of your turn is going to be placing your dragon onto the board. So with the purple player being the, the first player, at the beginning of the game, that player is going to choose one of the shops to go to. So let's go ahead and say that I want to go to the Smith Mart. Then I would move on to the next part of my turn. Now, in later turns, now that I'm on a shop, I, at the beginning of my turn, I must move to a new shop. I cannot choose to stay at the shop that I'm currently at. And if I choose to go to a shop that has other dragons, then I must gift each of those dragons a good or a coin that I have in my supply. So let's go ahead and say during my turn with the purple dragon, I chose to go there. And I'll go ahead and gain an anvil just for this example real quick. Then the, the blue player ended up going to that shop, and then during my next turn as the purple player, let's go ahead and say that I want to go to this location. Now this shop happens to have another player in it, so if I go here, I must gift each player that's there a good or a coin from my supply, gifting them any one that I would like. So for example, with the blue player being there, I could give that player the anvil that I had gotten before. Now, if I cannot pay each player a good or a coin, then I cannot choose to go to that shop. So in that situation, I must go to another one of the shops, not the one that I was at to begin that turn. Once you've moved to the new shop and gifted any other dragons there a good, you're ready to move into the second part of your turn, which is to either gather goods or enchant the shop you're currently at. And I'm going to take you through both of these in more detail. So let's go ahead and start by looking at the gather goods. So this particular action has four steps that are going to be done in order. Some of these steps are optional, and I'll let you know with those. The first step in this is to gather goods. You'll get one good from the shop and one good for each dragon that's there. And each one of the goods that you'll receive is listed in the top left-hand corner of the shop and the dragon that's there. So for example, with this shop right now, I'm going to receive one anvil good. And for that dragon, I'll also receive one anvil good. And I'll add these to my supply. The second step is an optional step, so I don't have to carry this out if I don't want to. With the shop I'm currently at, I can look and see if there are any open dragon slots on that shop. If there are, I can look at the different requirements for those, and if I happen to have a dragon of that type in my hand, I can choose to place one in one of those slots. Each slot is going to have different requirements. So for example, this one, I need an anvil or a potion dragon. With this one, I need a potion dragon. And I can fill either one of these if I can meet the needs of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and play Rusty. He is an anvil dragon into that slot there. And then I'm going to receive a coin from the supply and add it to my area. The third step is also optional. During this step, you can choose one of the dragons at your shop and activate its fire up ability. Right now I have two anvil dragons, so their fire up ability is exactly the same as all anvil dragons have the same fire up ability. So with the fire up ability on this dragon, it lets me gain two of one good either from the shop or from a dragon that is currently here. So with this, all the shop and the dragons are all anvils. So I can choose to gain two additional anvils. But let's go ahead and say, for example, that this dragon was here instead, and I chose to use his fire up ability. I could choose to either gain two anvils, or I could choose to gain two potions. 
The fourth and final step is to activate the shop's ability. Now with starter shops, they do not have an ability, so you won't be able to do this step. But once you start revealing the other shops, they will have abilities. And so you can choose to activate the shop's ability if you want to. Taking a look at an example of this one, let's go ahead and say that we were at the full plate buffet instead. During this step, I could choose to gain one of each type of good, and then I could choose to pay a coin and do so again. So I could get two of each of the goods out there. Again, goods are the six different resources and not a coin. Coins are not considered goods. During a gather action, if you place a dragon in a shop and fill that shop up so that all three spaces are filled, you are going to take the top card of the shop deck and place it in one of the open slots on the board without revealing it. So for example, if I filled up the Smith Mart, I would draw the top card of the deck and place it on any one of the shop spaces that are open on this side without revealing this card. This will be revealed later on in your turn. The other option as an action a player can choose to perform during their turn is to enchant a shop. In order to carry this out, the player must select a face-up enchantment that's currently out on the board that matches the type of icon that the shop has. So with my player being at the Hello Nursery, it has a green leaf icon up in the top corner. So I can only choose a face-up enchantment that has the green leaf icon in the top corner, such as the Will-O-Wisp or the Wraith Rose. From there, then I must pay the resources that are listed on that enchantment in order to enchant the shop. So let's go ahead and say that my player chooses the Wraith Rose. So with this enchantment, I have to pay three diamonds, two anvils, and a potion. Unfortunately, I don't have a potion, but I have a coin. Each coin is also considered wild and can be spent to represent any one good. So I can spend the coin and it will count as my potion. And anything I spend, I will return to the supply. So I'll have the three diamonds going back and two of the anvils. From there, then this particular enchantment lists a reward of six reputation. So I'll move my reputation marker up six spaces. And then I'll go ahead and slide this enchantment underneath the shop. Now it is important to note that each shop can only have up to three enchantments on it. Once you've completed that, then the second step in this is that you are allowed to, to perform the fire up ability on each dragon that is at that particular shop. You can do this in any order, and this is also optional so you don't have to activate the fire up ability on a dragon if you don't want to. So let's go ahead and start with Twig. This particular dragon lets me gift a good to another player to gain two reputation. I think I will do that, so I will go ahead and give my other player an anvil, and I will gain two more reputation. And then I'm going to go ahead and activate Cookie, which lets me draw an Artisan Dragon. With that, I can either choose to take the top card of the Artisan Dragon deck, which I don't know what it is, or I can choose one of the dragons that is in the park currently to gain instead. So I think I will go ahead and gain one of those. I will take this guy, and I'll add him to my hand. Now at this point, any cards that you take, whether it's enchantment or a dragon or whatnot, do not replace them. They will be replaced at the end of your turn. There's also a couple other important notes that I want to point out with this. First off, as you can see on this shop, it has the wild icon. When you're enchanting a shop that has the wild icon, you can choose any enchantment to place on that shop. But the shop still can only have up to three enchantments placed on it throughout the game. And then the other important note is that the dragon and coin shops cannot be enchanted as there are no enchantments for those particular types of shops. Once you've completed your action, you're ready to move into the final part of your turn, which is the end of your turn. During this part, there are three steps that are going to be done in order. The first step is to flip over any face down building cards that you had placed during your turn. Going back to my previous example, let's go ahead and say, for example, that I had completed this shop by placing a, another dragon in there. During, once I completed that, I would have placed a shop face down, and at this point, this is when I would reveal the shop face up so that other players can go to it during their turn. The second step is to make sure I don't have more resources than I'm allowed to have. First off, with the Artisan Dragons, I can only have a maximum of six Artisan Dragons in my hand. If I happen to have more than that, I must choose which ones that I want to get rid of and discard them to the bottom of the Artisan Dragon deck until I have six. Then I will check each one of my goods. I'm only allowed to have seven of each good. So if, for example, I have eight of the uh, anvils, then I have to return one of those back to the supply. 
Now, I don't count any coins that I have. There is no limit on the amount of coins or fancy dragons that I have. Neither one of those are counted, and I never have to return those to the supply during this step. And then the final part of this is if you have any spots that are empty from either enchantments or in the park for artisan dragons, you'll refill those by taking a card from the deck and refilling that slot. So for example, with this one, I would place a new artisan dragon out there so that I have five dragons in the park. Again, at this point, if you have to draw from one of the decks and it is empty, then that will trigger the end of the game and each player will get one final turn. Before moving on, the next thing I want to talk about are Sun Dragons. So throughout the game, players are going to potentially gain Sun Dragons from the Fancy Dragon deck. And then during a player's turn, if they meet the requirements of a Sun Dragon, they can play it to gain the benefits of it. So looking at a couple examples of this, let's say that I have Buttercup. I can reveal Buttercup during my turn. This one lets me pay five of the bread. And if I do, then I gain three reputation points and two gold coins. So then I could get two coins and I would get three reputation. From there, then this card can be placed off to the side of my board as I won't be able to activate it anymore at this point. And then one more example of this with Dazzle here. So if a shop has three dragons of the same type, I can gain six reputation points. So if during my turn, I was able to fill this shop with another one of the Anvil dragons, or during another turn, if somebody else filled one of the other shops with three of the same types of dragon, I can choose to play this on my turn as long as that's still true and gain the benefits of that. And again, placing it off to the side. Now that I've gone through a player's turn, let's put it all together and take a look at a couple of example turns before moving into the end of the game. So going back to the first player with the purple dragon, let's go ahead and do that action again where we're going to go to the Smith Mart and I am going to gain resources for that. So I'll gain two anvils. Then I'm going to go ahead and place that dragon for Rusty in there and I will gain a coin. And then I will move into activating his fire up ability so I can choose one of them. They're both the same. So I get to choose one and gain the resources of the dragon or the shop, which unfortunately is two more anvils. And then finally, I would activate the ability on the shop, which it does not have any. So that will go, that'll end my action. And then I'll move into the end of my turn. I don't have more artisan dragons. There are no shops revealed at this point that I need to reveal. And I don't have any extra resources that I have to worry about. And I don't have to refill anything. So my turn is over and it'll pass over to the next player. So with this player, let's go ahead and say that they want to go here. Again, that player will gain the resources listed there. So they're going to gain two potions. This one shouldn't be there. And then they are going to place a card. So they're going to go ahead and place this one here. They'll gain a coin. And then again, they get to activate one of their abilities there, which allows them to swap the uh, swap with a dragon in town and fire it up. So I'm going to go ahead instead and swap this one out with this dragon. Now, during this particular process, it doesn't matter on the icons on the shop, and I also will not gain any benefits from that. Then I will also fire up that dragon, and which lets me draw a artisan dragon. And I'm going to go ahead and take, I'm going to go ahead and take a diamond dragon. That's my area. Then again, that will end my action. So I don't have any new shops to flip over. I don't have any extra resources that I'm over my limits on, and I don't have to refill anything except for the Artisan Dragon over here. So I'll flip over a new one. Then it'll pass over to the next player. Again, this is going to continue going from player to player until we get to the end of the game. All right, so the last thing that we need to cover is the end of the game. So let's go ahead and say during the purple player's turn that that player at the end of their turn needed to refill the park and the artisan dragon deck is empty. So at that point, that would trigger the end of the game and each player would get one final turn, including the purple player. So blue would go and then purple would go and that would end the game. So at that point, I've gone ahead and simulated a game here. And so we would move into the final part of this, which is going to be final scoring. So during this step, each player, and you can do this either by player order or all together, however you want to do it, each player will return all of their coins back to the supply. And for each coin that they had, they're going to gain one reputation point. So with purple player, that player has six coins. 
So that player will receive six points. One, two, three, four, five, six. And anytime you overlap the 50, flip your token over to the 50 side. So that now that player has 51. Over with the blue player, that player has three coins. So one, two, three, so they are tied. And then you're going to also receive points for your moon dragons if you meet the requirements of them. At this point, if you have any sun dragons remaining, they are simply going to be wasted as you cannot complete them at this point in the game. So moving back over to purple, that player has Ajax. So I'm going to get two hearts, or I'll get two reputation points if I have at least three anvil tokens, which I don't. And I would have gotten plus three reputation points if I had the most anvil tokens or tied for the most. So I do not, so I will not get any points for that. And then moving over to the blue player, that player has a couple of cards. So first we have Kearney, and this one gives us two points or two reputation if we have at least three of the meat tokens, which I do. And I get plus three if I have the most. So I have five versus purple that has three. So I do have the most. So I'm going to pick up five points for that. And then finally, I have Shadow. So I'm going to gain one heart for every two Anvil Dragons in town. And I get plus three if, there's, if there is the most. So there's two, four, and five. So I'm going to get two points for that. And then the Anvil Dragons, I believe, are the most out there. So I'm going to pick up three more points for that. Finishing the game with blue having 60 points and purple coming in at 51. Now, if there would have been a tie, then the player that has the most artisan dragons in their hand would break that tie, so blue would end up winning there. If both players are tied for that, then the second breaker is going to be the amount of goods that you have. Again, if the players have the same amount of goods, then they are going to share that victory. Otherwise, for example, again, the blue player would win that. So I hope you found this video helpful in learning how to play Flamecraft. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please post those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And thanks so much for taking the time to watch my video and leave me feedback on it. I do really appreciate it and take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. Until next time, I'll see you later.